Hi, you guys. Hey, this is Kendra with Kendra All From Him Ministries. I'm Pastor Joey from One Church. Hey, Pastor Joey, how are you doing tonight? I'm doing great, Kendra. How are you doing? Good. It's so good to see you. Good to see you too. I'm ready to get after things tonight. I think it's going to be a good time. Yeah, it's going to be a good time. Hey, you guys, we um, are going to start a new series. We just finished up a series on worship, and we're going to start a new series, and um, we, we're going to go until the Lord says no. <laughs> we always say go until he says no, but um, we're going to start a whole new series on your identity, and um, the cool thing about identity is that um, there's so much to talk about. There's so much to explore, and we're going to speak to the marketplace. What is your identity in the marketplace? How about the ministry well house? Just in your lifestyle, like who are you? What were you created for? And Joey, probably one of the biggest questions I have when I'm coaching people, um, I have for them is I'm like, what is your passion? And 99% of the time, it's it blows my mind. People are like, well, I don't know. And so, you know, sometimes um, we just get in the rigmarole of life and we forget to dream and we forget who God's created us to be and our passions. Yeah. And um, so I'm excited that you're going to bring something to the King's table as we talk about identity. Yeah. You know, I think really, you know, people get so switched into the mode of survival mm -hmm. um, that when you're survival mode, um, you're not dreaming about anything. You're just um, hoping for the bare minimum of, if I can just make it, if I can just make it, if I can just make it. And uh, for dreaming to happen, there has to be hope involved. And for hope involved, there's got to be intimacy and relationship with God involved. And mm -hmm. uh, for, for real intimacy, you have to be aware of yourself. Uh, man, uh, if you ever met a person that's not self-aware, it's a trip. <laughs> you know? yeah. So, yeah. And so, uh, yeah, hopefully what we can do is get to the point where there be um, – some good questions we can ask, some good direction we can take to help everybody get to a point where they say, yeah, I feel comfortable with uh, my identity and um, in exposing some of the lies of the enemy through the process of, of uh, you know, how the world tries to force uh, false identity. Um, yeah. and, uh, but really, you know, I mean, for me, where, as soon as I started praying about this, I immediately started thinking about this uh, story that, is told all the time. And, and I thought, man, I don't want to be redundant. I don't want to, uh, to, to go to a story that has been preached, uh, ad nauseum, but man, I, the Lord put in my heart uh, when Moses encounters the burning bush mm. and, um, and it's really just, uh, my heart is this man, when we get to heaven, I pray that there's like a, a, a a DVR in heaven of all the different events of history. You know what I mean? Like we can we'll go back and watch when Samson knocks down the columns and uh, <laughs> you know what I mean? Like there's these things I want to see, like how did it unfold? What did that look like? And this is one of them because I remember being a kid and sitting in a, in a, in a Sunday school class and there's a felt board and there's like a bush that's on fire and you stick it on the felt board. <laughs> and then there's <laughs> Moses walking up and there's sheep around him and, and, you know, and you just think the story time, but to get in the mindset of, Hey, here's a real man that sees a bush on fire, which is probably not, you know, abnormal. You spend enough time in the wilderness. You're going to see strange things. Maybe lightning hits something and a fire start. Right. But this encounter that he has of being in the wilderness and, and uh, you know, it's chapter three of Exodus where this, you know, the story launches and it's, it's kind of bananas, you know? And so I just want to share a little bit out of that. Uh, and we're going to get into Exodus 3, uh, and it's going to be the main place where we get a lot of our resource for tonight uh, from the Word. And can I say this, too? For people that are watching, wherever you get your um, inspiration or insight, there's a lot of people that have a lot of good things to say. But if there's no biblical principles involved, um, man, I, I would question highly the, the validity of, of um, placing a lot of life hope into those things, right? Mm -hmm. Yep. Because there's people that say really cool things. Yep. Uh, but cool things aren't always the things that are going to sustain you through. You can build your house on the sand or you can build your house on the rock. And so making sure that there's always a core foundation of scripture um, with, with what you're getting after. So our foundation tonight is coming out of Exodus chapter 3. And um, so what we've got is this moment where Moses is uh, with his sheep. <clears throat> he sees this bush and he thinks to himself, it's on fire. And, and he says, <clears throat> literally, why is this? bush not burning up i must go see it and in verse four it says when the lord saw moses coming to take a closer look god called to him from the middle of the bush moses moses 
Here I am, Moses replied. Do not come any closer, the Lord warned. Take off your sandals, for you're standing on the holy ground. I am the God of your father, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob. Check this out. This is huge. You've got to highlight it for your Bible. Highlight it. You won't go to hell, I promise. Listen. <laughs> I love you. <laughs> That's right. People get afraid of that. They're like, I don't they know. Do. I don't want to go to hell because I'm more too. I love that. Yes, we're just we're just breaking that off right now in the name of Jesus. That's right. Go ahead. It's okay. It's Sorry. All right. And so, so God says, I am the God of your father, the God of Abraham, Isaac, and the God of Jacob. Check this out. Highlight this. When Moses heard this, he covered his face because he was afraid to look at God. Right there, there's a, a key moment that happens where Moses is keenly aware of who he's talking to at this moment it's not uh, ambiguous at all he is aware i'm in the presence of god i'm not worthy to see his face uh, i'm very aware of my weaknesses my um uh, of who i am and who he is because holiness is set apart right you're on holy ground this is a set apart ground and so he covers his face and he's like intimately aware which if you miss that you miss the craziness of the rest of this conversation so you got to capture that. Then the Lord told him, I have certainly seen the oppression of my people in Egypt. I have heard their cries of distress because of their harsh slave drivers. Yes, I'm aware of their suffering. So I have come down to rescue them from the power of the Egyptians and lead them out into their own fertile and spacious land. Like you start hearing this. If you're Moses, you are Hebrew. These are your people he's talking about. So there's got to be some excitement involved. Like, Yes, like I know of this oppression, I know of this slavery, I know of this pain. Um, this is awesome, right? They, it, there's got to be an excitement that's building. Uh, I'm taking them to a land, this is what God says, I'm taking them to a place, it's a land flowing with milk and honey, the land where the Canaanites, Hittites, Amorites, Perizzites, probably the worst name to be given ever, Hivites and Jebusites now live. Look, the cry of the people of Israel has reached me and I have seen how harshly the Egyptians abused them. There's a recognition, like Moses recognizing God is about to do something crazy for Israel. Right. This moment of like, yes, right? Verse 10, then it all changes. God says, now go, for I am sending you to Pharaoh. You must lead my people out of Egypt. Mm. And it's like, brakes get slammed for Moses. <laughs> it's like... Yeah, right like this is you know the most amazing thing ever immediately verse 11 but moses protested god <clears throat> who am i to appear before pharaoh which is a really really weird question to ask because considering whose presence he's currently in right you moses are currently in the presence of the creator of everything you're aware of this you've covered your face <clears throat> and now your question is who are you to be in the presence of Pharaoh. Right. Now, I understand that in that time, like Pharaohs were looked at as deities, but Moses recognizes, hey, you know, this is God Almighty. And, and the, the, it, it brings about something like this, this immediate question of who am I brings about this immediate um, revelation of the rawness of the heart of man, right? Yep. In one moment, recognize I'm in the presence of God. And then the next moment, God's saying, and I have this for you to do. And, and then the, the flashback to seeing, I, I can't, right? right? Like, I'm in the presence of the one who created me. He's leading me into something he's created me to do. And I'm going to reject it because I know me better mm -hmm. than he knows me. Yeah. Right? Like, that's what Moses is saying, right? You know, and. Yeah, and it's crazy because there he's right there with him, and immediately, <laughs> and immediately he's already like, I can't. Yeah, it's not like the next day, and he thought, man, you know, maybe I drank too much on that last sheep hike right. or something. Like, this is immediate, like in the presence of the Lord. Who am I to go before Pharaoh? Who am I to lead the people of Israel out of Egypt? Listen, Moses, uh, he loved the plan. Like he loved the concept. Everybody's going to get free. They're going to go to a place flowing with milk and honey. I like milk. I like honey. I like all this. I like the idea of this is great. Moses just doesn't like the execution. Like he's like, I love the, I love the idea of God, but if we could change the execution of how this is going to happen, I, I, I'm for anything else. Mm -hmm. And I think there's a lot of times like in our life that God says, Hey, 
Here's something awesome that's going to happen in your life. Here's something amazing that's going to happen in the people around you. And here's how I'm going to use you to do it. We love the idea of everything except for his plan of how he wants to use us. Why? Because oftentimes it's frightening. Mm-hmm. You know, rarely uh, when God calls you to do something, is there a sense of there, there, there might be a passion for it. But man, when God really calls you to step out, it's scary, right? There's, oh. a, you know, it's like, man, the, the, we very become very much become aware of our inadequacies or tonight what we're really talking about is insecurities. Mm. And um, remember hearing a thing that Bill Johnson said once, uh, Bill Johnson, if you don't know him, is a great uh, pastor out of um, Bethel church in Redding, California. Mm-hmm. But he once said uh, insecurity is simply wrong security exposed. Wow. You know, wow. Insecurity is simply wrong uh, security exposed. And, and Moses right here in this moment, I think it's a really cool thing with God. Uh, the, this encounter is, is a moment where it's like God saying, okay, I'm going to show you some wrong securities. It's almost like Moses is making God aware of his insecurities, of his uh, shortcomings. Mm-hmm. But I think really what's going on is God's making Moses aware. Um, and, and because he lets Moses talk. And, and I love how God responds because Moses is saying, who am I to go before Pharaoh? Who am I to lead the people? And this is what God responds back with. And, and sometimes, like, I, I love that God has a sense of humor. And, and I think in this moment, um, for me, at least it's humorous. Probably not for Moses, but for me, it's awesome. <laughs> Verse 12, God answered, I will be with you. Amazing. I will be with you. And this is your sign. Okay, Moses, I'm going to give you a sign that you're able to do this. This is your sign that I am the one who has sent you. When you have brought the people out of Egypt, you will worship God at this very mountain. This could potentially be the worst sign ever. <laughs> because like God's saying, I'll give you a sign, but it'll happen after you've done everything. Right. right. You'll have had to go before Pharaoh. You'll have had to go tell all the children of Israel, hey, come with me. God spoke to me. You're going to have to go through all this. Then you're going to have to lead this people group out of that place to this place and then once you're here and done all that your sign is going to be that we're going to have a moment together again (laughs) (laughs) nobody wants that sign (laughs) think about all the years in transition that he had to have been i mean like that's getting way ahead of it but just thinking (laughs) while he's in the desert how many years over and over like thinking he's missed the mark right yeah Yeah, i mean And now here's this thing where he's like, man, I, you know, I must have missed everything. I'm just going to be, uh, you know, a shepherd for, for eternity until I die. And, and now there's this moment where, you know, it's like, God, are you messing with me? You're calling me to do this. And my sign is once it's all happened, then I get my sign. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, yeah. Well, yeah. Uh, you know, and I love it, man. When you read that and you start thinking about that, like, I don't want, you know, God can do whatever he wants in my life because he's God and I'm me. But I, I, man, I never really want a sign like that from God. When mm-hmm. he says, hey, uh, Joy, I'm going to call you to plant a church. And uh, once once it's reached so many people or once this many people have been saved or once you this has happened or once all this has happened, uh, then that'll be your sign. Yeah. Like, no, 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 no. I, I want the Gideon sign. I want to lay out, uh, you know, <laughs> a fleece. And I want an immediate sign before anything happens. Yeah. Um, but the sign he gives Moses is like, no, I'll give you a sign once, uh, once it's all happened. <laughs> and, then, <laughs> and it's almost like because God changes the sign that he's going to give him because Moses is like, well, then who do I tell him is going to send me? And God says, I am. Now, listen, here's the insecurity thing. We, we just said insecurities are simply wrong. Securities is wrong. Moses says, who do I say is sent me? Um, and God says, you tell him I am sent you, which is, I would encourage everybody, man, word study that I am. Yeah. Um, and, and in the very simplest terms for, for the purposes of, of this, you know, moment, what God's saying is you tell him, um, the person who's sending you is the one who has always been, is right now and will always be more than enough right uh, like i am doesn't just mean i am right now i am means i was i am and i will be that's who's sending you and it's almost like to say with moses hey moses i i am the god who was with you when you were wandering 
you know, in the desert feeling lost. And I, I'm with you. And I'm still the same God that was there when you took the, the life of that uh, Egyptian, uh, you know, and, and, and I'm still um, the, the God that was with you. And, and it's, like, it's like all this stuff, the guy's saying, man, like, you let him know. And I think as much as that word was for the people that Moses was going to go minister to, it was a word for Moses. Mm. Like, yeah. hey, man, your insecurities, I, I, I get it. I get it. Because Moses later goes on to say, listen, um, I don't have a good voice. <clears throat> I stutter. You know, most people, you know, most theologians would say he probably had a stuttering problem. But he says, you know, my words get tangled and all this stuff. And it, it, it's excuse after excuse. It's insecurity exposed after insecurity exposed. Mm -hmm. And God, and, and the thing that gives me peace is about this is God's not afraid of our insecurities. Amen. Right? Amen. But I think he's very intentional about exposing them. Mm -hmm. And so this week, you know, my challenge for people that are watching would, would be a couple things. First is this, acknowledge insecurities in your life. Acknowledge it, whether it's insecurity about finances, relationships, um, trusting your decision making, uh, whatever it might be, recognize your insecurities. The second thing to do with that would be, address it with the Lord and with people that you trust. Uh, mm -hmm. you know, Proverbs says there's wisdom in the counsel of many, yeah. right? Yep. Yep. I would suggest go to the Lord first and then go to the people that you trust mm -hmm. and um, say, Hey, I'm noticing this about me. Do you notice this? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, I'm beginning to see this. Um, you know, the third thing you got to recognize in all this, once you've acknowledged insecurity and you start addressing it is keep going after it because if you don't listen, the third thing you have to recognize is wherever you go, there you are, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. There's people that think a different location or a different job or a different spouse mm -hmm. or a different whatever is going to take care of their issues. And the reality is wherever you go, there you are. Yeah. And your insecurities want to be with you in every single one of those scenarios. Yeah. It might be covered up more, but when life gets rough it's going to just be exposed again mm -hmm. and um and so that's a challenge so so okay so we've got all this really what i would ask everybody to start this process is this so you want to acknowledge you want to address it <clears throat> and recognize that if you don't deal with it it's going to go with you wherever you go the way to engage it is a really scary prayer right <laughs> really scary prayer and, and here's the prayer it's a super simple one but it's scary um, Lord, expose my wrong securities that I may be secure in you. Mm. That, right. <clears throat> if you, Lord, expose. Lord, expose my wrong securities so that I may be secure in you. Okay. Now to pray that is a big deal because mm. <laughs> it means that you're going to be exposed. There's going to be insecurities exposed in you. Um, but Kendra, I, I think we're at a point where it's so, it, 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 there's so many people that, 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 that want, um, Christianity in, in its easiest form and mm -hmm. in its easiest way. Yeah. And, and so, you know, but, but, but I think that really intimacy with the Lord comes, um, in, in some of the toughest times. You know, there's uh, Francis Chan wrote an amazing book years ago um, called Crazy Love. Mm -hmm. And I think it's in Crazy Love that he talks about, um, or it could be Forgotten God, is one of his books. Just read them all, you'll find it. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but he talks about these, um, these missionaries that were uh, captured and tortured and um, all expecting to be martyred. And then there was a rescue mission and they're all free. And he had the opportunity to, to later on talk with each of them at different times. And he said, they all, all said the same thing. If I could, um, I, they all said this, I've tried everything to encounter the Lord the way I encountered him when I was being tortured. Mm. And I've never been able to, no matter the amount of fasting, the amount of trial that's happened in my life. And, and, and many of them said, I would be willing to go back to be tortured if it meant that I could have the intimacy again that I had in that time. Wow. Wow. And, and so I think the things that we're very much most afraid to face is very much the things where we would find the most um, 
rest, the most um, affirmation that God is real and that he loves us and that he's for us. Yes. And yes. Sometimes the reason our relationships are so stagnant with God is because we're afraid to pray hard prayers uh, or, <clears throat> or ask difficult questions. <clears throat> Excuse me. And so, man, my heart would be uh, sincerely that, is that, okay, um, God, how, how do we do this? You know, and it's so crazy as you're talking. I was trying to look something up really quick, but it's not working and I'm getting distracted. So, um, but I was thinking about how when we say the word insecurity, sometimes people like hide, you know, like they shrink down. And I think, um, and I pray what we get to expose through this whole teaching and talking about identity is that um, we all have weaks, weaknesses and we all have strengths. And so whether it's insecurities and confidence, you could say it two different ways, right? But I think what we have to recognize is that um, God says that he embraces the humble, right? But he rejects, his, rejects the pride, pride, yeah. uh, pride proud, prideful, oh, proud, yeah. no words. But um, so th it's really coming in a form of humility just to say, man, like, don't we all just want to be our best? And uh, we all want to be the best at what God's created us for or what he's called us for. And some of us are going to figure that out through this process. I mean, that's part of the, the, um, the digging in and the mining of who am I and what did you create me for? And what's, you know, like having those honest insecurities, like Moses, like I know that I've had that feeling of where somebody says, could you do this? And you're like, but I can't do this and I can't do this and I can't do this. I mean, it's just human nature. Yeah. But God wants to say, no, but you're going to be able to do all things through Jesus Christ who strengthens me. Right. That's a scripture. But what it really is amazing is you begin to let yourself become vulnerable, you actually become stronger. Yeah. And the vulnerability is not weakness in your identity. Your, your identity is going to be shaken. Your insecurities are going to be stirred because we're just flesh and we're just human. But I think this is a really exciting journey we're about to step into because it's just so great. Like um, we have, there's such a misperception, I think, that you have to look a certain way, have a certain education, have a certain bank account, whatever it is, to be able to be used by God. And that's so bunk. It's so such a lie. And I love that. I, and I believe that there's been a shift and you're going to start to see people rise up that have never been seen before. God is looking for the one that would just say yes and amen. And, you know, sometimes we're like this. We have no idea what we're doing, but you know that he's called you. And there's a point of complete surrender where you just say, yes, Lord. And yet you're shaken because what you think you knew before becomes completely, like you said, exposed. And it's like an onion. Everything starts to unwrap. And we really have to become honest with ourselves and go, wow, I'm not strong in that area, you know, but I'm willing to learn or I'm willing to grow and become stronger. And as you, you know, as you get stronger in one area, it just elevates everything else. Yeah. <laughs> and and the, the, I think um, it, it's inspirational to other people when somebody, when one person will step out and be vulnerable, mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. you'll begin to see change in the groups of people that you're around. When you step out yourself, when you say, okay, I'm going to take this journey. I'm going to take this leap. I'm going to pray this prayer before anybody else does. Yep. Um, I think in that moment, there is a lot of um, inspiration to be had from other people. Sometimes uh, people, you know, are very hesitant to follow anybody. And I, and I really want to encourage people that are watching this entrepreneurs that are watching this, that you failed repeatedly. Mm -hmm. um, and you're nervous about what could happen next. And uh, man, go after this as hard as you can mm -hmm. dig deep uh, into the things that make you insecure. Let God speak to that because man, I champion the people uh, who have failed and get back up and go after it. And I've said the verse before, but Proverbs says seven times the righteous fall and each time they get back up. Mm -hmm. And um, th there's something that we need to have within us that champions uh, people that have failed and said, this isn't the end. Uh, that doesn't mark you. Yep. Uh, it, it's it's going to be part of the storyline in your testimony yes. that gives glory to God. Um, but it's not the thing that's going to be your anchor and drag you down and hold you back. Mm -hmm. And, Amen. Man, I, I just I just pray even tonight a release of uh, hope for those that have either uh, run bankrupt uh, spiritually, emotionally, or financially uh, because of choices you made, and that God would put a a, a confidence yeah. in who He is to trust Him with your insecurities because it's hard to trust 
especially if you've been wounded, if you've gone through an affair or you've gone through anything like where you felt like you stabbed in the back by somebody, it's hard to even get your trust level up enough with God to say, hey, well, I'll trust you. Mm -hmm. Intimate, insecure parts of me. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It's really, it's really a difficult thing, but there's so much benefit on the other side and beauty to come from it. Yeah, I think, and I think that's a, a key thing, Joey, you know, um, you, it takes risk to, to big risk, big reward. <laughs> you know, you can say that in life, you can say that in ministry, you can say that in the markets, whatever it is, but it really truly is. And risk comes um, as you jump to the deep and a lot of times in the deep, you just don't realize where you're at. And so I love that, um, you know, like you were saying earlier, just to recognize, I think there has to be that point where we just go, um, I don't have it all together and that's okay. Um, but here, and, and I am kind of a person where I, I like to get the advice of people around me because sometimes we aren't honest with ourselves just because we don't see ourselves like other people see us. Yeah. Um, what you might think you're weak at they may see that as a strength. And so a lot of times I've got a good circle of friends. I'll just say, okay, what is one area of my life that I need to work on or be honest with? And um, you just have to be okay getting the feedback because it's not, they're not coming against you. They want to call you up. Mm -hmm. And I think that's the cool thing about um, what I, what our passion is, Joey, I know yours is and mine is, is that we love to come alongside people and just mine the nuggets inside of them and say, Hey, you were created for such a time as this, or this is what I see in you. And I'm excited because I think this next season is going to be really exciting as we challenge people. And as you stretch yourself and you begin to allow yourself to see that it's not all, you know, perfect, uh, far from, but you know what I'm saying? Like you're really going to be examining yourself. You're going to recognize, okay, what's one thing. And here's the crazy thing. I think we need to say this, like, this is a journey. So you're not going to like all of a sudden turn your whole entire life upside down. You're just going to identify one thing. And we're going to walk through one thing and we're going to um, process through it. We're going to address it. You're going to bring it to the Lord. God, how do I need to shift this? Or what do you see in this? Or how do you want to see me change in this one arena? And you know what the cool thing, he's going to answer that. I, I'm excited about that because he's going to answer that. And then um, to be reminded that if we don't change, I love how you said, if wherever you go, you are there. Yeah. You know, I always say, what's the common denominator in the issue? If it's you. <laughs> <laughs> okay so there's an opportunity and this is the cool thing you I, I i used to tell my kids this i don't like the word fail because nobody ever fails um even you know some people quit and and i pray that nobody does that because there's always a reward on the other side but you never fail you just learn a new way of doing it and in building all the companies that i've ever built and doing all the teams and all the stuff i've ever done i've always tried something and if it's worked perfect. If it hasn't, I've just done it different, you know, or I've found somebody that could help me to have a different perspective on how to do it. So I'm so excited because I really think this is going to be a season of some amazing mining and some amazing understanding. Like my husband always says to me, and it's a great question because I have to have, you know, I want to be able to answer this. Like, what's the purpose? What's the purpose? What are we here for? What is this all about? And we know as believers, we're here to, to worship God and to bring glory to his name and that everything we do is as a form of worship unto him. But if you don't know the Lord, like, what, why are you here? What did God create you for? And, and I think this is going to be a really cool journey because every person was made with an intention. We're all part of a perfect puzzle piece and you, everybody puts their puzzle into play and it creates this masterpiece. And so Absolutely. what's your piece of the puzzle? Exactly. You know, and if you find, if you feel like you're really stuck in a rut and you can't break out, you know, one of the things that we hope through this is there's resources for you, mm -hmm. uh, whether it's uh, prayer, like for courage to have this prayer of, <laughs> of, you know, like, please pray for me to have courage to have another prayer um, where I would, you know, ask the Lord to expose my insecurities, whether it's that, whether it's, you know, you need like one-on-one. -on -one. Uh, I mean, if you can't get that in the community you're in, there's a community here that we hope that can help you, whether it's, a, uh, you know, a strategic sessions or, or um, there's ways to connect, mm -hmm. but there's got to be a step that you take. There's got to be something, even if you're in a rut, there's got to be forward motion. And, and I love what Kane was saying, like, man, it doesn't all have to be figured out right now. And it's not all going to be figured out right now because it's a journey, man what's the next step when you get done with this video what's well, a step that you can take within the next 24 hours to move forward yes 
Yeah. What is it? What's tangible? What's tangible? And you know, um, Joey, even when you say that, it's so good because everything has to have a plan. Um, you know, being in the finance industry for so many years and, and, and mentoring to that as far as finance, when you put a plan into place, you begin to see things happen. And for years, um, I, I'm just, this is my own testimony. I mean, 12 months ago, I picked up a life coach that has stretched me beyond. I've always been the life coach and I've had, so it was just amazing when I got to connect with somebody, but um, I've had to do things that I've never done before and it's been uncomfortable. But you know what? I look back over the last 12 months and I am so grateful that I invested in that, that I invested in me. And honestly, it was the first time that I gave myself permission to invest in me that way. Oh my gosh, it has changed my life. And it's more than networking. It's coming alongside of people with like-mindedness. It's challenging me to think differently, to be more creative, but also to examine myself and go, wow, you know what? I, I, I have a lot of room to grow, which I knew that anyways, but even though, even more so, you know, it's like, you don't know what you don't know. Yeah. And so, like you said, coming into community, man, we offer a free, 30 minute coaching calls, strategy sessions, pick that up because the reality is, is that sometimes you just need to dialogue with somebody to have a different perspective. And I love when I get to dialogue with somebody I don't know, and you have that kind of dialect conversation and um, you get to build this new friendship. And so you have a fresh perspective, you know, and, and we all need that. And um, yeah, and I'm excited because the enemy comes to steal our identity and it happened in the very beginning. And I know we'll teach to that, but it's been a ploy from the very beginning. And so my prayer in all of this, and I'm so excited, I, I, I'm really excited. I'm getting passionate about it, but <laughs> is that we're going to speak to your identity. It's going to be pulled out. You're going to know, you're going to have, you, you got to know that there's a purpose and there's an intention for, for all of this. And I'm excited to come alongside you on this, Joey, right? I mean, absolutely. Um, I get talking fast. I'm sorry. <laughs> I think we're both the same. The more excited we get, the closer we get to the screen. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, you can do it. Yeah. Well, I mean, there's a passion just to see people release into who they're always called to be. Yeah. And so when you're watching this right now, uh, as insecure as you may be about anything of, of even saying, because I know so many people that they believe crazy uh, things for people that they love. Uh, I've met people of great faith for people that they know. Yes. Little faith for themselves. Right? Come on. It, oh. it, it, it amazes me because they, I mean, they'll believe great things for their kids or for people in their church. But when it comes to them, it's like a orphan spirit thing, you know? Yes, 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 yes. Man, I was coaching somebody yesterday. We were doing a vocal lesson. And this woman, when I first started working with her, had this timid voice and and I knew like, I just needed to, I just needed to connect it, you know? And um, so I've been working with her for a couple of years, but yeah, we were, we were worshiping last night because we were doing a vocal lesson before the gathering. And I was just weepy, like listening to this voice that came out of her that probably a year and a half ago was this timid, I can't sing. And I'm like, yes, everybody can sing. It's just better training, but bringing her to this place where she's just releasing this sound. And I was like, Oh, it was like you can breathe for them, you know? <laughs> and I said to her, oh my gosh, that's gorgeous. And she's like, really? <laughs> yes! <laughs> but, but it's almost a great illustration of, you know, a lot of us have had our voices silenced or um, our passion silenced or our dreams silenced. And I just prophesy and I speak to every single person watching this right now that you begin to dream again, that you begin to realize your passions and that there'd be a stirring in your spirit that it would begin to rise up to say, I want something more. And I know I was created for something more and to do what it takes to step into that because there is a blessing on the other side. And I'm so excited. I'm so excited. Yeah. Yeah. My, my last thing to say would be this is everybody needs to know that God doesn't want to have a surrogate relationship with you through somebody else. Yeah. He doesn't want to have a, a surrogate relationship through your pastor, uh, through your through your grandma that always took you to church, through your spouse. Um, like God wants to have an intimate relationship with you. There's no surrogate, you know, where there's, there's a one-on-one. -on -one. Uh, when Jesus died on the cross, it said the veil in the temple tore in two, giving us access to the Holy of Holies. And the word says, run boldly to my throne of grace and mercy. And, you know, man, I love the image of that because it's like, hey, I want you to run to me because 
I want to have an intimate relationship where you're on my lap and there's an embrace and it's good. So uh, I would encourage in that tonight, man, the stuff we're talking about is going to take you out of head knowledge about who God is and bring a lot of heart knowledge about him as, uh, him as Father, Him as Abba, as the Bible would say, um, Daddy God. And uh, man, I, I'm like Andrew, I feel like we're both you know, getting excited about everything that's going to be coming down the pipe in the next several weeks uh, as this relates to those of you just watching. And man, God bless you guys. It's going to be good. Yes, yes, yes. Yeah, totally bless you guys. And I love, um, Joey, just a little while ago, you just challenged them. You need to do one thing, do one or two things. I want you to write down what you feel like is the first thing. Like, Joey, I'll, I'll put the prayer that you said on the, on the video because um, then people can look back at it. And then I want you to pray that in. Um, write it down, but then I do want to encourage you to do a strategy session because we really would love to have a conversation with you and just say, just come alongside of you and just and just see what God has for you. And if you're not a believer and you want a strategy session, we, um, we have influence in the marketplace, and so um, we can even speak to that. But you know, I, I think I want to encourage everybody to have their mind open to what could be and, and, and what the possibilities are, and just to give you permission and, and to speak and to have a new dream again. Amen. Yes. All right. You want to pray over us, Joey? Let's do it. Yeah. So God, thank you. Oh man. For somebody tonight, this was a, the, the beginning of recognizing uh, a burning bush in their life. And so Lord, I thank you that tonight would be you just, they're hearing your voice, they're recognizing their own holy ground and that things are going to be different. Lord, I thank you that uh, even as uh, insecurities are begin to come to the surface and really seem for what they are is just wrong, uh, wrong securities. But I thank you that, that um, there'd be such recognition and relationship that that's not a scary place, but it's a safe place because we find out really that uh, you are all that we need. You are, I am. And uh, so Lord, just thank you uh, that you are never changing. And the same God that spoke to Moses on that mountaintop speaks to us tonight. And, uh, and Lord, I just speak blessing over Everyone watching right now, may your face shine upon them, bless them. They're coming, they're going, they're lying down, they're rising up. Be their front and their rear guard, I pray in Jesus' name. Uh, amen. Amen, amen. Well, it's good to hang out with you again tonight, Joey. Oh, man, always my pleasure for yeah, sure. Yeah, thanks for your insight and your wisdom. And um, I look forward to next week when we meet back at the King's Table. Yeah, see us then. Come on, guys. God bless you. Bye, Bye you guys.